Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I have been absent from this channel for some time. That has been due to just life commitments, including exams and family, but now I am back and I am hoping to release videos regularly to try and help the understanding of eye conditions and eye pathology. So thank you so much for your patience. Let's get learning. Today I am going to be talking about a sight-threatening condition called giant cell arteritis, also referred to as temporal arteritis. By definition, arteritis is when there is inflammation in the arterial wall. Typically, giant cell arteritis tends to affect the medium to large size vessels within our bodies. This not only makes it sight-threatening, but also potentially life-threatening. It is a condition that primarily occurs in the elderly, typically occurring in the sixth to seventh decades of life. Urgent diagnosis of this condition is imperative because it will help to save sight. If vision loss has already occurred in one eye, then ultimately, one is trying to prevent sight loss in the fellow eye. In terms of risk factors, what we do know about this condition is that it tends to occur in the elderly and it has a bias towards affecting females more than males. The typical reason that one will experience sight loss due to giant cell arteritis is because the small blood vessels that supply the optic nerve of the eye. Remember the optic nerve is the nerve that transmits information from the eye to the brain. If the small blood vessels to the optic nerve become compromised and damaged, therefore the optic nerve is unable to function appropriately, then sight loss starts to occur. The specific blood vessels that get damaged as part of giant cell arthritis are the short posterior ciliary arteries. There are certain conditions in medicine that can be diagnosed from a simple test, which may be a blood test, which may be a scan. In terms of giant cell arthritis, it usually involves a combination of different aspects and investigative approaches coupled with the clinical examination of a patient that helps us to reach a diagnosis. So a good clinical history and examination will set alarm bells racing in one's mind as to the possibility of giant cell arthritis. This is then coupled with a blood workup which importantly will look at a full blood count, namely the platelet component of a full blood count and also look at inflammatory markers such as a ESR, which is a erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The ESR is typically elevated in giant cell arthritis. The clinical examination, the blood workup, usually are enough for a diagnosis of giant cell arthritis. However, other investigative modalities include a ultrasound scan and the possibility of performing a temporal artery biopsy. The key thing to remember with the possibility of a diagnosis of giant cell arthritis is the fact that one should always have a high index of suspicion as it is a diagnosis not to miss due to the irreversible sight loss that can occur if untreated. What I will now talk about is the classic hallmark features, both from an eye point of view and then from a systemic point of view that occur with giant cell arthritis. So in terms of the ocular manifestations, classically patients will complain of sight loss or visual disturbance. Other components of ocular disturbance or ocular symptoms can include double vision, temporary losses of vision, which is also referred to as amaurosis fujax, and also patients can complain of visual field loss, which is essentially when chunks of their visual field, i.e. the world around them, will be missing due to damage to nerve fibers that pass through the optic nerve. 
the classic textbook features from a systemic point of view which point to a potential diagnosis of temporal arthritis include temporal headaches, jaw claudication, flu-like symptoms, scalp tenderness, weight loss and fatigue. It is imperative that a eye care specialist examines a patient who is complaining of visual symptoms with the possibility of an underlying diagnosis of temporal arthritis. In terms of the clinical examination, it will initially center upon a key history from the patient to ask about the pertinent symptoms. This will then progress into a good, thorough clinical examination to include initially assessing somebody's visual acuity, then checking their pupillary responses, also check in other functions of the optic nerve to include color vision, to include imaging of the optic nerve and clinical examination of the optic nerve. So indirect visualization of the optic nerve using a slit lamp and a lens, OCT disc if available, and then visual field functioning. In addition to this ocular clinical examination, cranial nerves should also be examined and also eye movements. In terms of the clinical examination and actually looking at the optic nerve head, depending on the stage of the temporal arthritis, in the acute phase, one should be looking for a swollen optic nerve head, including peripapillary hemorrhaging and cotton wool spots. A key clinical tip to note at this stage is the fact that one should always look for the presence of a central retinal artery occlusion when one is suspecting a giant cell arthritis type picture as they potentially both can occur at the same time and therefore having devastating consequences for the patient. In terms of the treatment for giant cell arthritis, the mainstay of treatment which is imperative to begin promptly to try and preserve sight in the fellow eye is steroids, steroids and steroids. Patients are typically admitted to a hospital ward and receive IV methylprednisolone to try and give them sufficient amounts of steroid to try and combat the arteritis that is ensuing their body. In terms of steroid therapy, this will continue for several months and the steroid dosage will be tapered according to clinical response. Patients are counseled very carefully and are given comprehensive information about the potential various side effects that they may experience through steroid therapy. This may include and is not limited to high blood pressure, diabetes, changes to one's skin, psychosis, increased risk of infections, um, stomach ulcers, the list goes on. Therefore, it is also important that patients are started on the appropriate antacid medications and this will protect their stomach lining. And in addition to this, they are put on um, calcium supplementation because one of the key side effects of steroid therapy, particularly in the patient age group that typically gets giant cell arthritis, is one of osteoporosis. Depending on when the patient presents and when treatment is started, this will largely dictate how well one will recover from an ischemic event. This goes without saying, if a patient presents late and an ischemic event is already in progress, then the chances of making a full recovery are less likely. Another key aspect of management in patients with giant cell arthritis is referring them to the medical doctors and the rheumatology doctors. As, as mentioned earlier, they are also at risk of significant systemic complications, not limited to heart attacks and strokes. In this video, we have spoken about giant cell arthritis, how it typically presents, whom it typically affects, how one should go about trying to diagnose the condition, 
and the broad principles of managing the condition. The key key thing with giant cell arthritis and the thing that should not be forgotten is that if one suspects giant cell arthritis then it should definitely be explored because the unfortunate thing with this condition is that if it occurs and optic neuropathy results then not only is the patient likely to have suffered irreversible sight loss in the eye that is affected there's a risk that the same thing could happen to the other eye and therefore potentially leaving the patient blind in both eyes so that is the key take-home message from this video thank you so much for watching this video it's been great recording a video after such a long time i hope you've liked the video i have taken on a lot of the feedback from the previous videos that i uploaded over a year ago now and in those videos the key overriding message was things such as not to include um, music in the background and also to keep images and pictorials up for longer these are things i've taken on board and i hope i have improved these aspects of this current video in addition to the comments i received I was also asked to try and improve the audio quality and the lighting and I hope I've taken some steps to try and do that. My endeavour is to try and improve with every video so I welcome every source of feedback um, as critical as it may be so please do keep posting. Please give this video a thumbs up, a like and if you are new to this channel please 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 subscribe and if you are a current subscriber thank you very much for your patience and continued support. Until the next video, take care.